My journey as a framer started in Mexico, actually, when my dad and I started a small shop together. We saw there was a need quality-wise for better framing, and we only owned the shop for maybe two, three years, and then we moved to Vancouver. And that's when I worked at a framing shop here in, in Vancouver for a few months, and then I opened my own shop here. That was 26 years ago. One of those things, like many skills, it's one of those things that you fall into. My university background was advertising and marketing, and then I started doing framing. I always loved working with my hands, and it's just something that I realized that there was more development to the skill, so you can do it for years and years and years. You will never know all there is to know about framing. Yeah, it's a, it's a really rich skill, and I'm still learning. I learned framing pretty much at first on my own. Um, as, as I say, I started with my dad. Um, we Neither one of us knew anything about it. I traveled to a couple of uh, courses and workshops in the States, would both go back to Mexico, put them into practice, um, and learning from suppliers, learning from trade shows, learning from co-workers co-framers. So because I learned almost solo at first, there wasn't really someone who took me under their wing, you know. There are specific experts in the field and I have taken many workshops with them. They have written books, they have Facebook groups that we can refer to, so we have a lot of, because there will often be projects that no one has ever done before, you know. How do you frame a particular something that no one has ever touched? But then you go to your your network and you put it out there and everybody comes back with hey do it this way do it that way so mentors i think are just our you know our community mm -hmm. yeah our framing community well we have um great big windows to let plenty of natural light in um, and then we have the shop sectioned into a retail area, a design counter, and uh, mostly a uh, work area. Um, I would say it's about three quarters of the shop is dedicated to the working area. It is mostly open concept because every project is different and then having this open concept allowed us to um, to be more versatile of where we can stand and where we can put things. One half of our tools are stationaries, like the erasers, the dry erasers, and uh, brushes and pencils. And the other half are things you can find in woodworking workshops, like drills, different kinds of pliers, wire cutters. And then we have um, bigger equipment that's bolted to the wall and that are or the heat press and or even things that are um, passed down from previous generations. Yeah, like our our wall cutter is yeah. about 40 years old, we think. <laughs> <laughs> Measure it twice, three times and cut it once. Yep. Measuring <laughs> is, um, yeah. If you measure it the wrong, the wrong way the first time, then you have to start all over again. So yes, it's yeah. measure twice, three yeah. times, whatever, however many <laughs> times you need. <laughs> well, um, framing is a very collaborative skill process yeah. skill. Yeah. So uh, right from the get go, like when you're at design counters, it is a, a process that our customer and I work together. So there's a lot of things that we, we talk about what connects people, what, bring the, what makes them bring the piece in, and we look at the color and the texture and the composition of our work, and then we come up with design. design. <laughs> so how does creativity come into this? I would say that when we're framing something, we realize that behind every item that someone brings in, there's a story. So, because you know, nobody, nobody brings anything in just because. 
there's usually an uh, an emotional component to it. Someone either say you have a family heirloom or you have you have something that somebody picked up from a trip and that they have memories behind that, but everything is emotional. So part of us being able to be creative and design something with a customer is trying to understand what the story is behind it and mm -hmm. why they want to bring it, why they want to keep it. I would say, I mean, first of all, I love owning my own business. Uh, but I think it is freedom and flexibility. You have, when you have a small business, there's no bureaucracy in it. There's just, hey, Echo, what do you think that, about us doing this? And I might get a, yeah, that's great, or I don't, I don't agree. Uh, but then we, if we like the idea, go implement it, it's done. Over time, we've seen people bring uh, items that are bigger and brighter, and um, and we also get people who are uh, younger and who are already done their research and better educated in the sense of they know what style and what kind of feel they're aiming for. Our way of kind of keeping up with all these trends is that we constantly are updating our skill as well and we are building frames that are strong and we're choosing the right material mm -hmm. um, so and we're seeing a lot of younger people coming in yeah. and by, the, by that we mean people between 25 and maybe 35 which before was not really our our market but we're seeing that younger people are building up their art collections earlier in life. Well, every piece of art, every piece of photography, everything that you um, inherit is very valuable because um, they contribute to our culture. It, it, is our, uh, it is very important for us to preserve them and to present them so that we can pass it along to the future generation. Say that preservation of the artwork that comes to us is, it's, it's almost our main purpose as framers. Our, almost like our directive is do no harm. Something comes in, we frame it according to what we decided to do with our client and we have to make sure that if they decide to take it out of the frame in 20, 30 years, everything will be fully reversible. Everything will be given back to them in the same state that we received it. And for that, we rely on techniques and, and uh, adhesives. And so that's where we really have to follow the, the rules of proper framing. Uh, I always felt like the, the objects are more interesting mm -hmm. to frame. I think in the past we've done the uh, bumblebee. We can see that on our website. Yeah. Um, Although I have no idea how the bumblebee is doing now because yeah. it, it isn't organic. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Obviously, yes. <laughs> I find that in order to be creative, we need to be allowed time to be creative. Sometimes, you know, you're at the counter and you are proposed a project and the ideas don't always come right away. So oftentimes for projects like collections of heirlooms, things like that, even almost like what Echo is describing also about framing guitar picks and, and things like that, we, it, I almost suggest always two consultations with the client. One where we have that conversation about what is going to be framed and what they want and then we kind of just have to step back and you know sleep on it and sometimes the ideas just come you know in the middle of the night so yeah it's time 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 leads to creativity yeah